glad you're here to join us. It's been a while, we know, but we're <laughs> back. And it's gonna be better than ever. So here on the Frosto patio, we have a wonderful guest with us. His name is Brother Vince Mary, and he's gonna open us up in an awesome song. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you guys for having me. All right, well, you're welcome. So let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, Lord God, for calling us here today. I know, I've been bouncing around, <laughs> finally made All it All over the place, climbing every kind of mountain you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty cool, though, to follow you on Facebook and just be just amused and amazed about everything that God is doing in your life. I think it's Absolutely. a huge blessing, so I can only imagine how your mom and dad feel. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty neat to have you here with us, and so I told Tina, I said, we got to snatch him while he's here, because yeah. this Good is a God. story. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I think it's a blessing to have you most and for you know most of all and just to kind of be able to share with everyone else yeah. what what first of all what are you because you're in a habit <laughs> yeah we get that <laughs> or who are yeah, you you know, know <laughs> what are you because I can imagine people seeing you strolling down the street and like, oh yeah what the heck who's this <laughs> who and where's he come guy? from yeah. and <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you know um, maybe let's start with your childhood. Let's start with the beginning. Okay, right on. So yeah, I grew up uh, just small town, Hereford, Texas. Uh, you know, so uh, I think probably the biggest part of my faith was uh, just growing up a part of the church, part of the community. Uh, I went to youth group, you know, as often as I could, uh, just going on like mission trips and retreats and conferences and things like that. And I, I, I think. Price to say now, I I, I just went because it, I was out of the house, just away, you <laughs> just know, to get out. <laughs> just like that, you know, the classic teenager. Like I just want to get away from the house, you know, away from the parents or whatever. Um, but but what I found was the more I was going, there was something that was was stirring up inside, and I did not even know it, uh, you know. So that was the incredible part of it. Um, so I I just kept going, just kept, you know, it was like a fire that was slowly, you know, growing. Yeah. You know, um, something yeah, was lit. Something was lit. It was immaculate. Lit. You know? <laughs> so, so okay. So tell us a little bit. You know, your first prayers. Mm -hmm. What were some of the first prayers you ever learned as a kid? Some of the first prayers. Uh, I think. Well, you know, the classics like the Hail Mary and the Our Father and stuff. You know, uh, but I, if there was one person that showed me anything, it was probably my my father, my dad. Uh, who you know he he had gone through a conversion in his life, um, you know, and as a family, as a young boy my age, I was probably 12 at the time. It was very radical for me to see, you know. So I, I think that moment for him, those moments for him, you know, allowed like prayer to kind of cultivate 
nice. within the family and stuff. Yeah, I, I picked up, you know, the prayers that he was doing and uh, just started, you know, just going along with it, going with the flow and stuff. So, But what really, I think, actually the guitar helped me really? uh, to kind of begin my own prayers, you know, pray on my own, just kind of uh, learning to pray effectively from the heart. Uh, came from the guitar and music, you know, learning, yeah, to feel things out and stuff. So that was a big part of my nice. prayer life. I kind of want to go back. You said at 12 years of age, was that when your dad had a conversion mm -hmm. and you started seeing, recognizing something different? Right. And so you were witnessing that take place. Yeah. So that was pretty, a pretty good age because at 12, you're coming into your you know, mm -hmm. leaving boyhood, coming, stepping into manhood now, right? right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're witnessing this maybe for the first time, seeing your dad in a whole new light, mm -hmm. and that just leaving an impression on you. Yeah, it was a big, it was a big, big change. And I, I remember thinking it was almost like two different guys that come into the house, wow. and you can imagine the feeling, you know, the environment, the dynamic in the house. Well, okay. Like, who is this new guy? What, you know, what's he doing? What happened? You know, I was on, he's praying before meals and wants to kneel before bedtime. What the heck, you know? And so it was, yeah, just very different, you know, and I, I think there was some resentment there also, oh. you know, like why, you know, I don't understand who's, you know, um, but yeah, again, slowly it was that flame, right? That just kind of kept yeah. growing that flame that I didn't know was, was, was there, yeah. you know? So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I like that you said there was some resentment because that comes with change, right? Mm -hmm. No one's comfortable. And I'm sure it was yeah. really hard for your dad to, to start living differently. Mm -hmm. And when you come to that conversion and you begin to see life through faith, mm -hmm. it, do, it, it makes you change, right? You yeah. just have to change. Some things just take place. Yeah. And that leaves everybody else uncomfortable because it's like, wait a minute, does that mean that I have to change? Do I have to get on my knees and pray? Yeah, know. You know, what does yeah. this mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like all of a sudden I have to make, okay, I have to do, I felt like, uh, you know, just I want to follow those same steps, you know. I want to be like that, you know. That's pretty and awesome. So and I think it's a great example of just fatherhood. Yeah, that definitely. needs to happen today, you know. Yeah. And so. we need that so much more in so many of our mm -hmm. homes. So we talked about a little bit about your childhood, and, and you were out there at some retreats and some conferences and things like that. Um, so you were pretty much making your faith your own without realizing it, right? Yeah, you were yeah. doing it because you wanted to get out of the house. Yeah, I was like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but little did you know, God was doing something much more than yeah, that exactly, behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, right? he was doing his thing. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about when you first heard the call. What was that like? Well, uh, yeah, I'm like, mm, you know. <laughs> what does it sound like? What, what, yeah, what does it like? sound what like? like? What did you I hear? Think, well, the interest, well, it was like, it was a pro like overnight. It wasn't, didn't happen like that. Like I didn't hear a voice or anything like that. I, I mean, a few, I mean, I think that there's some experiences where God certainly makes himself known, mm -hmm. you know, in different ways. But like overall as a whole, just the experience of God uh, in just profound ways uh, throughout a course of time. Uh, throughout like my adolescent years, my teenage years, and even my college years, uh, experiencing God in such a profound way that it, it turns your heart, you know, and it turns your your emotions and turns your your just your. I guess you know you have that gut feeling, you know. I this is where I need to be. This is not where I need to be, yeah. you know. Uh, so kind of making that distinction. Um, but yeah, I think overall, if there was one thing, it was like just the life of service that I had experienced early on in like youth ministry, life team programs, uh, you know, just serving people that I met daily and just like learning to make people smile or laugh or, you know, anything. And you just like, even that's a, a service, you know? Definitely. And I, I felt that. And so I was like, okay, I, I think my life is certainly called to a life of service. Uh, and not not because I I'm happy because of it, but you know mostly because like I want to do it because God did that first before me. Jesus Christ did that before me, and not only that because like He's calling yeah. me to that same life, and so I felt you know compelled to pursue that. You know. So do you remember anything like okay? So I've I don't know, but when I experience God doing something in our lives, 
he's wooing us, right? He's mm -hmm. just like dancing with us and right. drawing us nearer and nearer and deeper and deeper yeah. into something, whatever it is he has planned for us. And then he'll let us see it. And then it's like, we can dance and stay here for a minute. Yeah. But sooner or later, I'm asking you to take that leap, yeah. you know? That's so was it. there anything specific that really told you, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is where I need to go. This is who I need to be. This is, this is who I'm called to be. Mm -hmm. Anything specific? Well, there was a few kind of things that happened. I had like, even in, like in college, I had like my own kind of big, uh, like just, okay, wow, like I'm not where I, I'm supposed to be, you know. And I think we all experienced that at one point where you're just, you know, in, in, the, in the depths, right? Uh, experiencing college life, like experiencing... Uh, everything that comes with it. Everything that comes with that, you know. And but I remember, like, I had gotten into trouble, you know, uh, got in trouble with the law and everything, and got arrested and all this, you know. And I remember walking into the cafeteria at the college where I went to school, and just, I'm just feeling like everybody, yeah, hey, like I saw what you did, man. That was awesome. Like, nice, great, cool. I saw who you were with and what you did and all that. Wow. You know, and I remember just deep, deep down, I felt like, man, this is not what I want to be known for. Yeah. You know, like I want to be known for something great. Like I want to be known for preaching the gospel and like just being a witness for Christ and representing Christ and not representing the evil one, you know. And so I think that kind of made me like, uh, like, okay, I need to be convicted. Yeah. Like, if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do this, and no, no dancing, no beating around the bush. Like, yeah. it's either yes or a no, yeah. Vince, you yeah. know. And so, yeah, I think that was probably one of the ma big main, like, you, you know, okay, like, uh, I don't want to play around anymore, yeah. you know. Oh, and awesome. he'll he'll make so. you decide, right? He oh, won't yeah. keep you on the fence for yeah. too long. Yeah. <laughs> he'll let you be there for a minute, but yeah, it's like yeah. you need to choose. That's right. You know, Freely choose. I know Stephanie. You know, she uses the analogy of being wooed and things like that. <laughs> and I don't know. You know, I think that's more of a, of a woman. Well, They're used to yes. us, man. We. We, we're supposed to woo them and, and, yeah. and do those things and ask Ooh. them to dance. Yeah. But I think from a male perspective, and it's a good analogy, and I think that's probably where a lot of the males maybe miss the point of, of, of maybe not knowing if that's really their call because, you know, Jesus does come and he does, uh, mm -hmm. he does kind of do the initiating. Right. You know what I mean? That's why if you hear any... Buddy, when did you hear the call? I mean, it was the first time maybe Jesus came to ask you, hey, yeah. will you be mine? So from your perspective, you know, how, how does how could you help a young man uh, that is discerning, and, and a young woman, but for a male perspective, if they're discerning or if they did hear something or if they had an experience like yeah. you even know was, you know, when you said that, you know, you're in the cafeteria and you said it's a yes or no, and it's kind of like an ultimatum if a, if a wife is, you know, you've been dating for a long time and the wife is saying, well, it's, I mean, Okay, you either gonna marry me or not. And exactly. Yeah. And that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, exactly. what he, yeah. that's what Jesus said. Yeah. You, you gonna marry me or us not? or not? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's an I do or I don't. Yeah. So how would you help a, a young, you know, person that maybe heard and, and and maybe is, you know, is, right. is, is being called in that area? How could you help them? Mm. Uh, firm it up. Uh, yeah, firm it up. For yeah, them. be yeah. strong. Yeah. Actually, like the the one of my favorite scriptures is from. Uh, from uh, uh, first book of Timothy when St. Paul's writing to Timothy he's in prison and he tells him you know fight the good fight of the faith uh, you know hold, hold fast yeah. be steadfast you know and just you know just just that you know fight the good fight yeah. of the faith you know and other translations say wage war oh, yeah. against you know wage war with the good good fight of the yeah. faith you know I like that version better and so yeah it, it just it puts a nice perspective but uh so I've always kept that into my mind yeah. whenever I'm uh even you know because even us we have every day is a discernment right every day is a battle so you like certainly want to keep that in mind but yeah I think if there's anything it's just constantly keep your life devoted in prayer constantly like be reminded of uh God's presence yeah. Because God is, you know, definitely there. God makes himself known uh, in many, many different ways. And I think that as people of faith, we have to be just, okay, where can I find God today? Like, wake up in the morning and say, where am I going to find God today? Where can I, where will I see God today? You know, and just, and I think, like, a big part of my vocation, and I, I, I want to reiterate this, is just do not be afraid. 
Yeah, you know, if you're feeling the call, do not be afraid. Like, just take that leap of faith that you that Stephanie was talking about. Take that leap of faith and just go, you know. Trust. And trust God in that, you know. And, like, that's the message of John Paul II, yes. right? St. John Paul, do not be afraid. Actually, like, Denver right now is celebrating the anniversary of uh, World Youth Day 93 when, De when he went to Denver. And yeah. so, like, the whole Denver community is just on fire right now because you know like just they've happened just for the past 23 years yeah wow. and just you know remembering that do not be afraid and you know we have to follow god we have to follow christ yeah. you know? i like the analogy wage war because i think you know maybe it's for us men is we kind of think that you know uh, or even perspective of when you guys get the call uh, as far as maybe you know going into the religious life um that you know that god calls and Bam! It's just the honeymoon, and we're yeah. gonna, every, but I like you know you're telling us life still happens. Yeah, life is still it, it, mm -hmm. you know whatever the, the the process is for us. Life is still gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know. But continue to keep that faith and wage war and, and mm -hmm. keep the good faith. You know? Exactly. And, and so I'm glad that you know that you know it's just it does it's not all uh, roses and, right. and, and and butterflies that there is still mm -hmm. a process through that discernment period. Exactly. And, and, and so. Uh, it's a good perspective. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. And then I also picked up on the fact that you said every day you got to look for God. you got to seek Him out. you got to mm -hmm. recognize that He's in the midst of your everyday life. And mm -hmm. you say that here as a brother. Mm -hmm. Did you learn that as a brother? Or did you learn <laughs> that in your faith walk as a young person, a young adult? And yeah. more now that you're a brother. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I kind of picked up on that, you know, throughout the formation years. Uh, like one of my, I, we one of our years of formation is in California, and uh, right on on Santa Barbara, right next to the Pacific, oh, you know. Beautiful. Yeah, it was. Man, y'all had it hard. <laughs> yeah, we were still, yeah. We, well, we were way inland, so we had to come over the mountain and go, like, you know. So I, I would go there for spiritual direction, right on the coast, you know, uh, UCSB University of uh, Santa Barbara. One of my spiritual directors there um, was Father John, Father John Love, and he he, he reminded me every day. He's, he he would tell me a Latin phrase, uh, "Age quad agis," which means "Do what you're doing." Uh, and so I just constantly remind you know just you know the difference between being and not doing. You know, like if you're gonna be, like be, you know, and just kind of be. And a B, you know, yeah. like fully be there, be fully be, be yeah. And it just kind of go. It reflects off of uh, Saint. I think it's uh, Irenaeus when he says, "The glory of God is full is man fully alive. The glory yeah. of God is man fully alive." And so, like, if we're alive, we're we're being, we're being everything alive. that that we were created to be. You know, metaphysically, you know, soul and body. Yeah. Right, and just kind of remind, keeping ourselves, you know, I guess, reminded of that constantly, you know. I love that because this so. is love fully alive, and <laughs> that's, that's right. what it's all about. That's is right. being able to be. live mm -hmm. fully according to what God has planned, and in that we can just be. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be preoccupied about what you're doing, but mm -hmm. focusing on being and. And too many of us are so focused on doing, 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 yeah. and that becomes who we are. That's, exactly. That doesn't define who I am. It's mm -hmm. when I'm with you and just being, that's who I am. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And I think the, like, the incredible part of that is like when we're doing that, it's amazing how God can break through and He can reveal Himself yeah. through that. You know, like if, if I'm just doing... You know, you're right, you just lose sight of God, you lose sight of the goal, yeah. you lose sight of prayer. But when you're being, you're, you're just aware of your being. Yeah. I think God, you know, be, makes himself known.